I have exciting news for you. From the week of December 5th until the 15th, you will have the opportunity to win an all access lifetime membership pass to the personal development school to give yourself the gift of healthy relationships this holiday season. We will be selecting five lucky winners to receive special prizes. And all you need to do is to be subscribed to our YouTube channel, like this video, and then click the link in the description and register your email in order to be entered to win. There are also bonus points for those who comment below on how a lifetime membership to our school could really benefit them or impact their lives. So make sure you check your email on December 16th to see if you win. Again, we'll have five winners that get all sorts of different access and prizes to PDS. And if you don't hear back from us, please don't worry. Everyone who enters will also still receive a small gift for myself and the personal development school as a thank you for being a valuable member of the PDS community. And all of the details are listed in the description of this video below. Best of luck. So the Cleveland Clinic estimates that somewhere between five and 8% of the population is a narcissist. And I don't mean is narcissistic or has narcissistic traits. I mean, is an actual narcissist with narcissistic personality disorder. Research shows it's roughly 4.8% of women and estimated to be somewhere closer to 8% of men that actually have narcissistic personality disorder. Now, this is not a small percent of the population. I mean, we're nearing close to one in 10 people, right? 8% is almost one in 10 people. So what I wanna take you through in this video is how to be aware of the signs that somebody might be a narcissist, those really early red flags to pay attention to, and then six other behaviors beyond just being aware of the signs. Um, to really engage and to make sure that you do not fall into a narcissistic relationship or abusive relationship of any type. So one of the first things is you want to, in order to avoid relationships with a narcissist, know the warning signs. And these are those like really early um, things that you might see and that you really have to pay attention to. So one of the first ones is control. Right. If somebody's really controlling early on, and especially if they are always trying to know your whereabouts, know what you're doing, know who you're with. And I don't mean like checking in, but really trying to control, really trying to have this intense and consistent oversight, especially at an early stage of the relationship. Those are big things to pay attention to. If they seem to be manipulative, this is another big thing to be on the lookout for, whether it's that you see them being manipulative with you in certain ways, or you see signs or a history of them being quite manipulative with other people. One of the other big signs you'll see really early on is love bombing, a lot of like excessive love, care, connection, but also coming on so strong where it kind of feels like too much too soon. And generally, this is so that the narcissist can kind of get into your space and make you in a position where it's like you can't um, think of anything else but them because they're always top of mind. They're always texting you, talking with you, making plans to see you, engaging with you in some form or another. And, you know, as much as that can be a nice feeling that can draw people in in some ways, if you pay close attention, almost every person I've ever spoken with who got out of a narcissistic relationship said to me, you know what? There was something nice about it because I felt special and important, but something never quite sat right with just the intensity and degree at which they love bombed. So that's your intuition really coming online and saying, hey, pay attention. You may also see with narcissists, they tend to move the goalposts. They'll say, this is what we want. We want to get to this point. We need to get here in the relationship. And they may make a promise. And then as you get closer to, you know, that goal or outcome, the, the posts move again, things change again, right? So the, the narcissist may say, and these are early on um, dynamics. Oh, you know, I'll take you up to this place if you come over here and see my family first. Um, or if we go to this place that I want to go to first, and then you do it, and then they kind of change their end of the bargain. So that's what I mean by moving the goalposts. You'll also see narcissists, and this is such a huge thing to pay attention to. This is a big sign. If you are attempt if somebody's attempting to isolate you early on warning sign, pay attention. If, if somebody in the first few months of dating is trying to sort of like pull apart your relationships with other people, other friends, other family members, um, these are really important things to be mindful of. And, you know, as I go through all these different things, I can't help, but also think that it's important to share that, you know, narcissistic relationships are not just with one person, right? It's not just in a romantic relationship. It can be friendships, 
family relationships. There can be people in the workplace. And we can also have these types of relationships with governments or entities or systems in our lives. So it's really important to pay attention to all these different red flags. Um, and another big thing that you'll see early on is that that gaslighting component, right? This, the narrative changes, the story changes. I never said that. I said this instead, and that making you question everything. Um, so huge sign of narcissism. And then things like monitoring you, um, really like trying to pay attention to your whereabouts at all times, and a, a total lack of accountability. So the first way to avoid narcissistic relationships and abusive relationships as a whole is to be aware of these signs, okay? The second thing that you really want to be able to do is not be a subconscious match to a narcissist. Okay, what do I mean by that? This is such an important thing to dive into here. So, you know, even like maybe re-listen to this part twice if you found yourself struggling with um, unhealthy relationships in the past and, and attracting unhealthy people into your life. What happens is that our subconscious mind has a comfort zone. And that comfort zone is like what it knows and what's familiar. And whatever's familiar, the subconscious mind, which is essentially survival seeking at the end of the day, it just wants to survive. Um, the subconscious mind generally um, will really work hard to maintain that comfort zone because it equates it to, okay, this is how I'm going to stick around. This is how I'm going to stay alive. So if you have a history or past of narcissistic abuse or just toxicity in your family dynamic, you saw unhealthy relationships, you know, um, you were spoken down to, your boundaries were violated, things of that nature, your subconscious mind says, okay, even though those things were painful, they must be safe because we survived. So what happens is your subconscious mind gets imprinted and those imprints become the relationship to yourself. So for example, if your boundaries were violated a lot growing up, and you had to give up your boundaries to stay safe and avoid more conflict or punishment, then your subconscious mind says, that's what's working for us because we're still here. We're alive. We survived. So then, and I'll give you a second example. So then when you also get, um, let's say you get a lot of really um, painful dialogue, maybe there's verbal abuse in the household, for example. Well, guess what happens? The subconscious mind says, okay, well, we still survived. And often internalizes that dialogue as its own subconscious comfort zone. So you may, if you come from a history of like violation of boundaries, painful internal dialogue, um, a lot of control, a lot of being manipulated, being gaslit ever in some form or another, direct or indirect, isolated at different points in time. If you have some of these things in your history in one way or another, because they imprint your subconscious mind and then your subconscious thinks it's good because you're surviving, your subconscious is often reenacting these things in the relationship to yourself. So for example, you might be really mean to, to yourself in your internal dialogue. You might be really controlling of yourself. You might be violating your own boundaries all the time to try to please other people. You might, you know, isolate yourself and not open up and be truly vulnerable um, and state your needs from other people. You might, you know, so there's all these patterns that if we have them at some point in time, we're carrying them in the relationship to ourselves. And I have never personally, and I've worked with like literally thousands of people over the years, I've never personally seen somebody coming out of a narcissistic relationship who didn't already have some form of like they treated themselves in similar ways, maybe toned down ways a little bit, but similar ways to how the narcissist treated them. Meaning I've had countless conversations with people out of narcissistic relationships who were already really mean to themselves in their internal dialogue. So guess what happens? Our conscious mind may recognize a red flag, but our subconscious mind says, oh, but this is comfortable and familiar. And at the end of the day, research shows, shows conclusively that your subconscious mind will always outweigh and overpower your conscious mind eventually. So your subconscious mind always wins. So what happens is you meet a narcissist the red flags are there. Your conscious mind might notice them from time to time, but your subconscious mind is drawn into them and says, well, this is comfortable. This is familiar. So I think of people getting into these relationships on some level, and this is not me blaming this person at all. It's literally a result of unjustified trauma already that has imprinted you to begin with. But 
this person gets into this relationship with a narcissist and it's like the alarm bells don't go off properly because they go off a little at the conscious mind level, but the subconscious mind isn't waving, you know, the, the alarm, it's not turning on the alarm bells to say warning, warning, warning. It's instead going, oh, this is familiar. This is safe. So I can't stress enough. If you want to avoid narcissistic relationships, make sure you're good with your own boundaries. Make sure you're good at your own, you know, taking care of your own needs. Make sure that you're not cruel to yourself in your own internal dialogue. Make sure that you are not manipulating yourself to please other people, right? All of those things are you treating yourself like the narcissist would treat you. And so then your alarm bells cannot go off when you get into those relationships. Okay. So that's number two. That's, that was, don't be a subconscious comfort zone match. Do that inner work and that healing first. Also, if you want to check out a course for free on this, it's overcoming narcissistic abuse course. You can use link below. It actually gives you access to everything at PDS. And, um, it does a deep dive into how to heal and how to recondition your subconscious comfort zone. So this doesn't happen. Number three, learn to critically think. Okay. This one may sound like it's, um, you know, like, of course, of course, critically think, but what do I mean by this? Well, we get conditioned a lot in society. And there is this analogy I often talk about on this channel. And it talks about how, um, if you've ever seen those elephant videos, they're kind of sad, but the elephant's tied to a tree and it's a baby elephant and it tries to pull the, the tree out of the ground and it can't. So instead it just gives up. And then you see all this time later, these giant big elephants that if they just yanked the tree you know, once they would be free, the tree would fly out of the ground because it's a little tiny tree and this really big elephant and those big, large elephants that could easily get away. They don't try. And it's that element of learned helplessness at a subconscious level. It's like you learn that you can't, you know, do these things. And when we really take a look at society, the media, all these different things that we're exposed to for so long, you know, we're taught to just accept, you know, whatever the authoritative, um, opinion is we're, we're taught to just accept this and just go along with it and to not question things. And because of that conditioning, it is very easy for ourselves as individuals to also get into a state of learned helplessness. And I think now more than ever, you know, for so many different reasons, it's so important to actually be able to question things that people are telling us. And then when it comes to the narcissist, what we're often seeing in relationships is that, you know, the person dating the narcissist or with a narcissist in their life is putting the narcissist on a pedestal and subordinating to them. It's like, oh, this person's so amazing. They're so smart. They're so authoritative in some way. And their opinion must be the truth. And critical thinking involves being able to hear somebody else's opinion, listen to it, take it in, but then actively consider it. That step is so important for all of us as individuals. And, you know, we're in the information age, right? We get so many um, opinions. We get so many ideas. We're told so many things. And we have to actually not just accept, you know, whatever authority is telling us in a relationship or whatever form it's taking. We have to say, you know what? I hear that. Let me do my own research. Does this work for me? Is this right for me as an individual? Is this my personal truth? So when the narcissist, and you'll see this a lot, right? In the bonding stage with a narcissist, the narcissist is trying to be grandiose and special and amazing. That's their personality. And so it's so easy to get conditioned like the little elephant to think, oh my gosh, this person's always got the right answer. They're just an expert in so many different ways and they're so amazing. And to just start taking their opinion as gospel, nobody has authority over your life except for you. And, you know, somebody can have lots of good information. They can be helpful. They can be supportive. You might come to this channel and I might help you with attachment styles and learning about different things, learning about different traits, but I am not you. And ultimately you should be listening to me and taking everything I say with a grain of salt. You should be saying, oh, that one really resonates with me, but this one, maybe not so much, or, Hey, I'm really struggling with that thing over here, but I think I'm really good with that sort of that point over here that she's making. So we, we should really make sure that we are not getting stuck in that framework of conditioning where we just accept, but instead we consider ourselves, we consider our needs. And if you imagine how this plays out in the, the relationship with a narcissist, 
It's such a powerful way. And it's so simple when we practice it often to not get dragged into things because the narcissist may tell us you're wrong. This is what you need to be doing. You should be doing what I tell you to do. And we might go, Hmm, you know what? I hear that. But for me, I can tell that my needs are this, or my boundaries are that, or I'm hearing that person's opinion and I can see where they might be coming from or why they might think that's the right thing. But I know where I'm coming from. I know what's right for me. And I'm going to honor that. And so, you know, I just can't stress enough that importance of being able to not just accept information from others, but question it for ourselves individually and take into consideration our individual needs, our individual boundaries, our individual programs, so that we can be empowered to make really strong, critically thinking based decisions. And that's such a a powerful antidote to being sucked into a narcissistic relationship or an abusive relationship of any kind, because we'll really see those red flags early. And when we stand up to the narcissist, if they're going, you know, they don't like to be stood up to. So, you know, if they get really reactive or they gaslight or they get really angry, you start to really clearly see the picture of who this person is. And so having that ability to develop that, that skill and really nurture that skill within ourselves is just of the utmost importance, especially today for so many different reasons. Um, so the next big thing is that we want to address those red flags. So, so point number four here is we want to address those red flags and address them early. Again, it kind of goes hand in hand with point number three. If we do address them, narcissists do not like to be addressed. They don't like to take accountability. They don't like when you have a different, a different opinion, and it will help you go back to that Point number one from now, from this video, um, about being aware of those signs. You'll see all those signs screaming loud and clear because they'll be angry. They'll be frustrated. They might be hostile. Um, Try to control you. Try to make sure you have a similar opinion. They won't like red flags being addressed. So when we see a red flag, we have to say, hey, you know, I notice that sometimes um, I, I feel manipulated in a certain situation. Can you help me understand like what your intentions are here? Like we have to address those things, honor ourselves, communicate, set those boundaries. Um, And this brings me to the next point, which is we actually have to know our boundaries and relationships, what's okay for us, what's not. And our boundaries will forever be evolving in relationships. So we may have a boundary one time that um, later on has to be an even bigger boundary with somebody else or in a different situation, but we have to check in with our boundaries. Do I feel like my boundaries are protecting me are looking out for me? Am I, am I honoring myself? Am I showing up for my, my personal integrity in the relationship to me? Um, and those are such important things to help you feel strong and supported and able to navigate different challenging situations. And, Um, The next big thing here is we want to know our needs and we want to be able to communicate our needs. And what's so interesting is that if you're communicating your needs and the narcissist is only meeting needs when it's appropriate for them um, and when it links to then their need being met back, this is when we know, you know what, if this person can't make compromises with our needs in general to a certain degree, it's a pretty strong sign that something might be up here. And we can go back to looking at some of the early signs to pay attention to, you know, critically thinking and considering ourselves for a moment, trying to consider like, hey, is this the right relationship for me? If this person's not willing to show up and have a healthy dialogue or a healthy conversation. Um, And then we can also make sure that we are questioning, you know, these sorts of dynamics that we are getting involved in. And the last point I really want to make um, in here is that the more we can work through any core wounds we have that are a part of our subconscious comfort zone. So for example, if I think I'm not good enough, my subconscious comfort zone is going to end up staying and investing in relationships where people make me feel like that. If I think I am helpless, I can't do it on my own. I can't make my own decisions. Um, you know, I'm going to end up in situations where I'm going to somebody and bonding with them so that they can do that for me. And Um, that will, all of our core wounds end up becoming self-fulfilling prophecy. So really working on our core wounds around unworthiness, not good enough, unsafe, I will be betrayed. All these different things um, that keep us small are so important, not just to become more securely attached, but also to make sure that we are the most empowered um, version of ourselves that we can be, and that we feel comfortable and confident in making decisions about who we are in the world and what we want to create and what types of relationships we want to have. Um, so hopefully this all makes a lot of sense. And again, you can do a deeper dive into, um, that narcissistic personality disorder, um, course for how to heal from narcissistic abuse. You can use that link for free, um, down below. 
And thank you so much for watching and for being here today. Please subscribe to this channel if you're enjoying it. And I will see you in the next video.